Okay, this is part two in my tutorial series for cycles rendering and texture maps, and we're going to be mapping all kinds of stuff on things here. So in this lesson, we're actually going to use UV mapping, whereas in the last lesson we used just automated generated texture coordinate mapping for us. So let's just, we'll start from scratch. Now notice what I have over here, just to kind of give you an overview of it before we do it, because we'll do it from the beginning, is I have this image underneath here, and here are the vertices of this sphere unwrapped and laying flat. In fact, you can see, look at here, here's the top of the sphere, there's the bottom of the sphere. That's where, you know, um, you, when we use the multi-resolution modifier, that can, you can unmap these better than this works out. These are kind of difficult to do, but it's easy for the program to do, and so, um, and then you can take it and move this. Well, let me just show you that. If I press G over here, um, this because it's already highlighted. Notice how it maps across the surface like that. I'm kind of just orienting it. Or if I want to map it onto the pole, there's the center right at the pole. If I want to map it onto the other pole, there it's mapped down there like this. All right, so you see it moving around. So that's what that UV image editor does for it. But we'll we'll start it from scratch so you can see it from the beginning because there's really there's just really no better way. All right, we're going to delete it. Oh, terrible, right? All right, so we're going to add a mesh add a UV sphere to the scene. Just bring it up here. All right. And then we're going to go into edit mode. And then with ed within edit mode, we want to mark a seam because we're trying to split this thing open and lay it flat just like we saw in here. All right, so I'm going to turn everything off for the moment. And then I'm going to use our handy edge select tool by pressing Alt on the keyboard. And I'm going to right select that seam. That's in the center. Well, it's not in the center, but it's close enough to the center. And that seam goes all the way around. Unlike if I went vertical, we'd have trouble up at the north and south pole of that sphere. So now the seam is marked. I bring up the toolbar with T. And I come over here and I mark the seam right here under UV mapping. All right, I mark it. And you can see it turns a slightly brighter color in there. Zoom in like that. And then once the seam is marked that you want, then you have to make sure all the vertices are selected. So I press A twice. Now they're all highlighted. And then I can unwrap it. I press unwrap here. And then up here I press unwrap again. All right, so now I've unwrapped it. But now it's laid down. doesn't look like, quite look like the same kind of projection on top of this image here. But we may or may not use this image. Uh, this kind of gives you an idea. But just so you know, if I right click over here, see I'm, I'm just selecting vertices like I normally would in the 3D window. So you can use the same type of tools over here. If I press B and select all of these like this, and then press G, I can move those around. Or I can press R, right? And just by pressing R, I can rotate it around. So I can position my UV map basically on top of my image or vice versa so that can kind of line them up how I want the image to be projected onto my object and they make it really simple with this here All right, but now before we get too far ahead let's leave edit mode for a second and go get the node editor and we'll give this object a texture or a material first just some kind of material we'll go look at it in here so here's our diffuse material and here's our it's, putting out to the surface and then what we also need is an image texture so we're going to add a, a texture an image texture like we've done before and there it is here and then we need to go open it so now notice up here by adding the image texture it's added an image texture button in fact let's I'll verify that for you I'll close that and you see the image texture the texture button doesn't exist until you add the image texture like that and now it exists up there. And we get a couple things we need to do. First, let's we'll open up a image. And I think that was this one here. I think it was. We're going to find out here in a second. And so that was so well the way we find out is we'll go into the UV image editor and we'll go open up the image in there. We'll go open it as same one, simple test three. Yep, it's the same one. All right, back to the node editor. And then I want to connect this to that. All right, so now I have a texture coming in here. And I don't see it. Oh, there it is in edit mode, right? I see it in now and there like this. But it's still not quite there done because over here 
in the previous lesson, we'd come over here and we'd pick generated coordinates, automatically generated text coordinates. But this time, since we've unwrapped it, we want to use UV coordinates. Okay, so when we do, it brings up, I'll go full screen here, it brings up the texture coordinate node like before, but you see instead of being connected from generated, it's connected from UV into here like this. All right, so then you notice suddenly it shows up whether I'm in edit or regular mode like that. So now we have our texture UV mapped onto the sphere, and then we can go back into the UV image editor like this. And if we go into edit mode now, now you can see this is laid out here like this, just as two spheres. Well, that still doesn't look quite right. Even though we're mapping it across like that, it's not really laying the whole thing out. We're kind of looking at two hemispheres like that. So it may not be, maybe, well, actually, maybe that's the look you want, and, and that would be good enough. But notice here we have these triangles kind of coming together there and one over there. So it's not quite right. So we still need to go back here into edit mode. And then you can press U on the keyboard. And that brings up the UV mapping menu. The same as kind of what we unwrapped it before. Here's unwrap up here. But U brings up all the details. And then we're going to come down here. And we're going to make sure we press sphere for the projection. And now suddenly it basically lays the sphere open differently and just kind of unwraps it all. So now you see the mapping is completely different where now you see the green triangles in the center are mapped to that one little section and nowhere else. So you can do one of two ways depending on, depending on what you want. But now like I said, you can come over here and press R. And now you can rotate this around and you can specifically place where you want to place your map like this. I don't know what that is. There's a nice little anomaly. I'm not sure what that is all there, but all right. Well, I hope that even gives you some ideas. Then you can experiment around and add your own maps, and and we'll do a lot of practice with this kind of stuff because this is uh, yeah, this is one of those things that just takes takes a lot of practice. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.